The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hi, I'm Mike, and in a previous segment, we used an Arduino to read temperature data from a thermistor. Today, we're going to expand on that and build a temperature controlled fan for our desk. The idea is that if the room temperature gets too hot, then the Arduino can turn on a fan to cool us down. We did a lot of the heavy lifting with the code last time, so let's open that up and see where we got to. So here's what we ended up with. It reads a thermistor and prints the temperature to the serial monitor. Our aim today is for it to perform some kind of test. And if the room temperature is too hot, then it should turn on a fan. But before we add any new code, I'm just going to take a moment to reorganize this slightly. I've moved all the equations we wrote earlier into four separate functions. A function is like its own little program. In Arduino code, there's always a setup and a loop function. The setup is at the start and only runs once, and the loop comes after that and repeats continuously. But you can also write your own functions, and that's what I've done here. I've taken all of the equations from last time and written them into their own separate functions. Now, in our main loop, we call those functions to execute the code. For example, here we call read sensor average and pass it the value inside the thermistor pin, which is A0. The read sensor function will read pin A0 and return the value for V out. That value then gets passed back to the main loop and we continue in the same way for the other functions. One of the useful things about structuring your program that, this way is that it becomes much easier to reuse parts of your code. For example, if we wanted to add another temperature sensor, then all we'd need to do is call these functions again and uh, pass them a different value, uh, whichever analog pin we wanted to use. We wouldn't need to copy all of this and then go back and mess with the variable names and stuff. So it saves us some time and also some program memory too. All of that code gets replaced by just four lines. Along with these functions, I also need to write two more. One for turning the fan on and one for turning the fan off. I'm also going to set up the built-in LED as an output to stand in for the fan during testing. And that means we won't have to add any additional circuitry. So to let us know if our code's working, in the fan on and fan off functions, we'll do a digital write to the LED. A simple way to do our temperature check could be with an if statement. We could say, if T is greater than 27, fan on, else fan off. And the if statement works pretty much how it sounds. You say if, and then whatever's inside the brackets or parentheses, if that is true, then execute the next piece of code. Otherwise, you jump ahead, and here we have an else statement, and the else statement will run if the preceding if statement was false. So what we have is, if t is greater than 27, then turn the fan on, otherwise turn the fan off. Now, I'm using Celsius here in my statements, but you could use Fahrenheit if you changed t to tf instead. So that seems like it should work but I'm not so sure, so why don't we test it to find out? It's a very hot day today, so I've got some ice here to help keep the ambient temperature down. You can see that the mist is reading about 24, 25 degrees, and the LED is due to come on at 27. And that's this LED here, and uh, not this one. This one is for the serial port, so we're looking at this LED. I'll just give the thermistor a little bit of warmth. There you go. So LEDs come on, temperature is above 27, and when it goes below 27, it turns off. Now, you might see a little bit of the problem I'm expecting. So the LED kind of uh, flashed a little bit, and that's when the temperature is very close to that trigger point. Uh, I'll see if I, can, if I can make it happen again. So watch as the temperature approaches 27, You see the LED kind of rapidly switches on and off and that's not what we want at all. 
The way to fix this is to add what's called hysteresis. And that's when the output of your system, in our case the fan, or the, the LED for now, when that lags behind the state of your input, which is our room temperature. Think of it like dragging a, a, a weight or something with a, a stiff rope. If you yanked on the rope really hard, then the weight might jump up and hit you. But if you had a more elastic rope and you yanked on it, then the rope will absorb some of the force and you won't get hit. And it's this kind of effect that is going to help smooth out our erratic switching. Let me show you what I mean with the code. So now, instead of a single trigger point, I've set some thresholds to check. We've got a high threshold and a low threshold. And crucially, they're different. I've made them differ by one degree, but you could play around with this value as long as your low threshold is smaller than your high threshold. And now for our new test, we check if the room temperature is higher than the high threshold and switch the fan on if that's true. And after that, we have an else if statement. So if this part is false, we perform this check to see if the temperature is lower than the low threshold. And if that's true, then we turn the fan off. And this will fix our problem, because now after switching the fan on, the room temperature has to drop by a whole degree before the fan will switch off. And similarly, it has to raise by a whole degree before it will switch on again. Now if we test the new code, then the light comes on nice and cleanly if I cool it down. It goes off. And we can't replicate that behavior at all. So, good job. So with the code fixed, it's time to replace our test LED with a real fan. But the Arduino pins can only supply a very small amount of current, around 20 milliamps. And this is fine for LEDs, but it's no good for something more powerful like a fan. We're going to need some additional circuitry. We could use a relay, and that's a type of switch that's controlled by a magnetic coil. But I actually want to control this fan that I already have. It's a, an ordinary desk fan, and that means that it plugs into the mains, and we don't really want to be messing around with that. So I've picked up a remote controlled outlet that sits in between the wall and the fan. And this particular one came with a little remote unit that's designed for a Raspberry Pi. And that's what I'm going to use today. I've already designed a circuit diagram. You might notice it's using voltage dividers between the Arduino and the remote unit. And they step down the 5 volt signals from the Arduino to 3.3 volt signals that the remote expects from a Raspberry Pi. I've already tested this circuit on breadboard, so now it's time to solder it to something more permanent. This is prototyping board and it's what I'm going to construct my circuit on. There's lots of different designs you can get. I like this one because it is the right size for the Arduino Micro and it has plenty of room for other components. I'm going to solder on my Arduino first but normally you'd want to solder the flatter components like resistors because that makes the board easier to handle. But I haven't worked out the, the actual layout I'm going to use, so I'll use the Arduino as a fixed point and then add the rest of the components as I go. Okay, so this is what I've come up with. The, these types of prototyping board are fairly flexible. You can pretty much arrange things however you like. Uh, I've obviously put the Arduino in the middle. This is my thermistor. I've put it on the edge there with a red wire connecting 5 volts to one end of it. The other end goes to the 100k resistor, which is connected to ground. And this yellow wire goes from the midpoint to analog pin A0. The orange wire connects three volts to this header here, which is where the remote unit plugs in. And up here are the voltage dividers that supply the data to the remote unit. I've had to use surface mount resistors because I didn't have enough of the larger ones in the in the right values, but you can use any resistor will work fine. These quarter watt resistors are, are perfect. Uh, around the back, you can see the wires that I used to connect our voltage dividers to the remote unit. I've used some thin wire here, but again, any wire will work fine for this. 
And uh, that, that's it, it's pretty straightforward as, as circuits go. Uh, we're now ready to upload our code and there's just a couple of changes so that it works with our remote unit. So let's have a look at that. We haven't needed to change much of the code actually. Uh, setting up all those functions earlier has really helped us here. In the setup, I've assigned some pins as outputs for our remote unit. I've added a fan status variable and an extra check to our if statements so that we only switch the fan on once instead of all the time. And there's a set sequence for the pins that I found in the, in the documents for the remote unit. So I added that to our fan on and fan off functions and that was all I needed to do. So let's up upload it and give it a try. So I have my fan plugged into our remote socket. The socket has a little red LED that comes on when the unit's powered and we can do that with this button. Um, but I want to see if our Arduino can do it and it's still very hot today so I've got a cool pack just keeping the temperature down so we can actually see it working. Plug it into my laptop now. Okay, and just need to capture the temperature. So it's about 24 degrees. If I take the cool pack away, it should start to climb and maybe need to warm it up. Um, fan's due to come on at 27 degrees. So 26 now, and the fan comes on. And if I take my finger away, temperature should drop and when it gets below 26 degrees the fan should go off. 26.4 might need to give it a little hand. There we go so it works just exactly how we wanted. And that's my basic temperature controlled fan. I think it's a good Arduino project to try because a lot of what we learn about reading the thermistor also applies to other analog sensors. I think a nice addition to this project would be an LCD to display the temperature, or maybe some controls to change the trigger point for the fan. What do you think? Or are there any other Arduino concepts you'd like to see covered here? Let me know on the Element 14 community at element14.com forward slash the learning circuit, where you'll also find all the code and diagrams we use today. Thanks for watching.